Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the contaminated soil from that chemical spill at the Port of Victoria now off to a waste facility. Two women in North Texas died from hypothermia following last week's winter freeze. Plus, rain patterns across the state have led to several water rescues. This evening, we head to Conroe, Texas, where residents brace for more flooding. Well, the rain is finally over. We had probably seven inches of rain in the last five days. Uh, that was good. Now, the, even better, the storm has moved away. We didn't have major problems here, but we're looking for clearing conditions. By the time we get to the weekend, you're going to like it. We'll be talking more about that coming up in a moment. Plus, the Victoria West Warriors baseball team led by interim head coach Jay Perez. Hear from him in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Workers are moving soil contaminated by a chemical leak at the Port of Victoria out of the port. San Patricio County Sheriff Oscar Rivera says the 50 to 60 trucks of soil are moving through his county. The soil will go to U.S. Ecology in Robstown. That's a hazardous waste facility designed to handle that kind of material. The oil and chemical spill at the Shamrocks Products Terminal at the Port of Victoria happened January 3rd. Authorities say about 300 barrels of crude oil and diesel were leaked. High demand jobs are out there and now there's grant money available to help train people for those positions. 25 News Now Weekend anchor Adam Seibel joins us now in the studio with more. That's right, Don and Karina. This was a collaboration between the Victoria College, the Victoria ISD, and a few other agencies. Texas Workforce Commissioner Chairman Brian Daniel was on hand at the Victoria College Emerging Tech Complex for this announcement. They provided nearly a quarter of a million dollars in funds to help prepare Victoria's educational community for everything needed to train students in subjects like industrial technology and other similar fields. The Victoria Sales Tax Corporation pledged $150,000. That was matched by the Workforce Commission for another $150 for dollar. That brings $300,000 toward training and uh, support services to this community. Again, the grant will help Workforce Solutions, Golden Crescent, Victoria College, Midcoast Contraction Academy, and the Victoria ISD Career and the Technical Education Program. The grant is a partnership with these training entities and is co-funded by the Victoria Sales Tax Development Corporation. Grajardo says with the new industries coming to the Port of Victoria, this money will help fill those high demand jobs that will become soon available. Don Karina, back to you. Thank you, Adam. No Democrats filed to be placed on the ballot for this year's Goliad County elections. The Goliad Advance Guard reports as Texas Secretary of State website shows all nine candidates who filed for the six county offices up for election filed as Republicans. Early voting for City of Victoria Mayor runs through January 30th. Early voting is at the Dr. Patty Dodson Public Health Center, 2805 North Navarro, Classroom A. You can vote this week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. On January 29th and 30th, you can vote 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On the ballot, Peter Brown, Carissa Winters, Josephine Solis, Dwayne Crocker, Jacob Sauceda, and Bob Constantine. Join us Saturday, February 3rd for complete coverage of the special mayoral election. And for any residents who have an interest in getting involved with Victoria's government, you can apply to run for city council. Residents can run for any of the four regular city council district, one, two, three, and four seats. An informational session about the roles of city council members will be held on February 6 at 10 a.m. at the city council chambers. That's going to be at 107 West Juanlin Street. The election is set for May 4th. And now let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Fittis. Well, thank you very much. The uh, rain, the heavy rain is over with. Uh, this was last night right at about midnight when the last big hurrah came through the area. You can see it right there. By 2 o'clock in the morning, it was uh, fairly soggy. And by 4 o'clock in the morning, it was all gone. Yes, that storm system is out of our area, so we don't have that to worry about. We have a lot of moisture on the ground and in the air, so we may have some fog and maybe some drizzle tomorrow. And then a frontal system comes in and really makes it a nice weekend. So we'll be talking more about that coming up in just a moment. We'll toss it back to you. 
Mac, thank you. There is a road closure in Lavaca County at FM 530 in Speaks at the Navidad River Bridge. Here's a look at why that road is closed. Also, authorities say Wednesday afternoon suspects took the road closed sign set up for high water at three Lavaca County roads. A red pickup was seen in the area of one of these thefts. Call Lavaca County Crime Stoppers at 361 401 1930 with any information. The National Weather Service has these river flood warnings posted for the crossroads. Two river flood warnings for Victoria County are in effect. A warning until further notice for the Guadalupe River at Victoria. The river is expected to crest at 28.7 feet Saturday evening. Flood stage is 21 feet. A river flood warning for Victoria and Calhoun counties is in effect until further notice for the Guadalupe River near Bloomington. The river is expected to crest at 26.9 feet late Sunday morning. Flood stage is 20 feet. In DeWitt County, a river flood warning is in effect until Sunday morning for the Guadalupe River at Cuero. The river is expected to crest at 29.7 feet Friday evening. Flood stage is at 24 feet. Also in DeWitt County, a river flood warning is in effect until late Saturday morning for Sandy's Creek near Westhoff. The river is expected to crest at 23.2 feet just after midnight tonight. Flood stage is at 21 feet. In Lavaca County, a river flood warning is in effect until early Friday afternoon for the Navidad River at Sublime. The river crested this morning at 31.6 feet. That's a new record there, breaking the old one set in 1981. Flood stage is 24 feet. In Lavaca and Jackson counties, a river flood warning is in effect until early Saturday morning for the Navidad River near Speaks. You saw that picture. The river is expected to crest at 28 feet this evening. Flood stage is 24 feet. And in Jackson County, a river flood warning is in effect until Saturday evening for the Lavaca River near Edna. The river is expected to crest at 24.7 feet early Friday afternoon. That would tie the record there set in 1948. Flood stage is 21 feet. Also in Jackson County, a river flood warning in effect until early Sunday afternoon for the Navidad River at Strain Park. The river is expected to crest at 28.7 feet early Friday evening. Flood stage is at 24 feet and we're not the only ones dealing with flooding. 12 people, five dogs and one horse rescued by boat west of Conroe where residents are bracing for flooding. And the excessive rainfall around the Houston area has pushed authorities to conduct an emergency release of water from the overfilled Lake Conroe Dam. Impassable tonight with backyards turned into swamplands. It's a scene that's left many on edge. Coming across our property here. Neighbors like Evelyn, who's lived in Conroe's Makeda Estates for more than two decades, is no stranger to this dangerous flooding. We're still recovering from Harvey, for one thing. During Harvey, uh, we got three feet in the house. Tonight, the San Jacinto River Authority working to release water from the Lake Conroe Dam. If they will just maintain what they're releasing now and not increase anymore, then we're pretty confident we'll be all right. As residents worry, it won't just be the roads impacted overnight. It takes its toll on the wildlife when it comes through like this, too. Two women in the Fort Worth area died of hypothermia following last week's winter freeze. The Tarrant County Medical Examiner's reports 78-year-old Vernestine Kidd developed hypothermia at Mountain Creek Senior Living in Grand Prairie and died at the hospital. Now her family wants answers from that retirement home. They also report 81-year-old Odessa Johnson was found dead in her home after developing hypothermia. Her neighbors say she struggled to take care after herself. Texas authorities are investigating an officer-involved shooting. The state's Department of Public Safety says troopers were in the middle of a narcotics investigation in Conroe this morning when shots were fired. A 35-year-old suspect was struck. Life-saving measures were performed, and the suspect was taken to a local hospital where he is now in stable condition. Texas Parks and Wildlife Commissioners are considering a land swap with SpaceX that would give the company almost 43 acres of land from Boca Chica State Park. You can read the Texas Tribune article on CrossroadsToday.com. And our next story leads in with the landing gear on a small private plane collapsed as it was touching down at Hobby Airport Thursday. Authorities said crews 
reported that on Thursday and they said the Houston Fire Department were checking on the status of the people who were on board the plane. Operations at the airport have not been impacted by the incident and planes continued to take off and land. 18 people were evacuated from a Fort Worth bakery and treated for possible carbon monoxide poisoning this morning. The call for help came from the Guanajuato Bakery at about 10.30 a.m. The Fort Worth Fire Department said one woman fell unconscious, but further details about the patients are not yet known. The Fire Department says there was construction work in that building on Wednesday, but they have not confirmed whether it's related to the emergency call. Firefighters are checking the air quality in the bakery four times per hour until it becomes free of carbon monoxide. Texas election, election officials are facing challenges with the new Republican-backed election law requirements. This law requires certain counties to increase their number of polling locations, which may pose problems for smaller counties. So here's your viewer poll this evening. The question is, does your county have enough polling locations, yes or no? According to our results, it looks like 79% stand at yes, and the remaining 21% stand at no. Thank you for voting. Come to Crossroads today com slash vote to take part and we're going to have an update on 25 news now at 10. Join 25 news now anchor Karina <laughs> Garcia yeah. for the 2024 Crossroads Heart and Stroke Walk. The event takes place on Saturday, February 3rd at 8 a.m. The walk will start at 815 at Riverside Park located on 311 Memorial Drive. To register or donate, visit CrossroadsHeartWalk.org to sign up. It's only nine days away. Get signed up. Okay. Yeah. Join Karina. No, please do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us. A teen murder suspect escapes after a hospital visit. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, his last known moments all captured on video. Also ahead in New York, Taylor Swift stalker arrested for the third time in just a span of five days. What he tells authorities this evening. Investigation into why deceased murder suspect Romeo Nance went on a shooting spree that involved several members of his family is still underway in Illinois. Case that reports shortly after they identified the 23 year old as the prime suspect, federal authorities were able to track him down in South Texas. Nance is believed to have fatally shot himself after a confrontation with law enforcement officers outside of San Antonio in Natalia. A 17 year old murder suspect escaped from custody Wednesday morning in Philadelphia. Authorities say Shane Pryor escaped while he was transported to a local hospital. Pryor is a suspect in a 2020 murder and has been in juvenile detention center awaiting trial since he was 14 years old. He was transported from a detention center to a children's hospital with a hand injury. As Pryor was getting out of the vehicle of the hospital, he was able to escape from the detention center staff. Now we know through our investigation so far, looking at a lot of video, um, that he was able to go in and out of a few buildings in this area. That's what you see police doing here. We're searching the buildings. We have not found the individual yet. It does not appear that he was handcuffed and police say he is considered dangerous. Thank you. 
A man accused of stalking Taylor Swift arrested again Wednesday near her New York City townhouse. This is the third time in just five days. Law enforcement sources say it occurred less than two hours after he faced a judge in connection to a previous arrest. He was seen going through a dumpster just steps from the singer's home. As he was being led away in handcuffs again, Crow said he was looking for his pants that were thrown in the dumpster, quote, when they falsely arrested me, unquote. He also said he has no place to stay. More than 60 dogs were found living in two cars in North Texas. Now rescue organizations are stepping in to rehome the Chihuahuas, including rescues in Rhode Island. It was pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. Animal rescue workers describing what they saw in these pictures as heartbreaking and deplorable. There was no uh, running water. There's no electricity at the home. And then again, neither vehicle worked. Two weeks ago, workers discovered 63 chihuahuas living with their owner inside two cars in Comanche, Texas. She tried to put them all in one vehicle with her so she could, you know, keep an eye on them. And then in the other vehicle, um, she had the others. Sheena Trahan with Save a Tiny Adoptable says they were only let out a few hours a day, many of them spending their entire lives inside this inoperable pickup in the garage. If we could not have gotten all these dogs out of there, she would have stayed right there with them and they would have just probably all died in the vehicles together. Trahan says some of the dogs had fleas, but otherwise appear healthy despite living in filthy conditions without vaccinations or any routine checkups. And she basically would not leave those dogs until she found a rescue that would take them. Now in the care of several rescues and shelters across the country, including two in Rhode Island. Trahan says Road Home Rescue and Friends of Homeless Animals RI have agreed to take in a few. She says they stepped up, no questions asked was just like, let's figure out logistics. And, and now we have that and we actually will start vetting their dogs tomorrow. There's tons of us out here that will do everything within our power to help you. Just give us a chance. The dogs will be arriving in Rhode Island in the middle of next month. Well, good evening, everyone. A very lovely evening out there. Now that the rain's gone, it's 69 degrees, but prom I promise you it's going to feel more like January as we get down into the weekend. We got up to 74 today, of course, in the nice sun. It was good to see the sun come back. Uh, last night, uh, we officially get uh, 2400, but the truth is, in the last five days, we've had about seven inches of rain uh, throughout many areas. In fact, some areas are even more than that. We'll be talking about what to expect for the uh, weekend and also about that rainfall that uh, was a blessing. We'll be talking more about that in a moment. I hope you didn't get scared with the sun today. We were going, what is that? Uh, yes, it's here. And finally, the big rain season is over. It was about four or five days long. Get a load of these. These are the last five days, as according to Kokoras, uh, which is a voluntary system of people who collect the rainfall every day and report it in. So that's very helpful uh, to everything that we need to do to track the rainfall. In the last seven days, or five days rather, Riverside Park has had a total of 7.47. Can you imagine? Uh, Goliad had six inches of rain, Hallettsville 10, and Gonzalez about almost nine inches of rainfall. That was pretty spectacular. And here's the, 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 the good thing about it. 
That's a lot of rain, and guess what? We had very little problems with it. I think that's because you were prepared, and you knew it was coming, and you knew what to do when it arrived. So that is going to put us in real good conditions for next month, which is, uh, shall we say, planting season. It's not that far away. So now the big stormy weather has rolled all the way out into the Mississippi. High pressure is not with us just yet, but it will be coming very soon, and that will clear us up and uh, uh, give us a real nice couple of days. Now, tonight we may have a little bit of fog. We have a lot of moisture in the air and on the ground, and as the temperature cools, we're going to condense that out. So it may be a little soupy early in the morning, but we don't expect any significant rainfall. You may even have a little drizzle, but nothing uh, serious. Now, uh, over, the, of course, the last 24 hours, here is Victoria. Uh, you can see us in the green, that's up to an inch. Anything in the blue is over an inch, and so it was just amazing how much rain we got in just the last five days. It all began on Monday, remember that? Well, uh, this is the important part as we go forward. Now, uh, Don was mentioning all of the rivers cresting and all that, but here's the bottom line. Uh, this is the Guadalupe River here in Victoria. It is a forecast to get up to, let me, let me check that again. It's um, 28.1 feet, all right, 28 feet. They've already calculated and they know exactly uh, how high that is gonna come on shore. So Riverside Park is gonna be affected. Saxet Lake is gonna be um, affected. So a lot of these uh, lakes and river, uh, river bodies are gonna be, shall we say, very close to flood stage, if not in flood stage. So if you've got equipment there, or you think you were gonna go play down there, well, you're gonna have to deal with that. Even in Cuero, this is the Guadalupe River at Cuero, is gonna be in a major flood stage here. And this is all for about two days. And then by the time we get to Monday, Tuesday, it starts decreasing. And so we should be in good shape. And as a matter of fact, I don't see anything heavy um, in terms of rainfall for about five to seven days. So here's future tracker. You see anything? Nothing. Uh, we get into tomorrow, uh, which is Friday. You can see a little bit of cloud cover still sort of hanging around the area. The computer keeps putting out a little rain possibility. I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to say we're going to stay cloudy. And when the front comes through on uh, Friday night by Saturday, big, nice dry wind. And that's going to give us a very nice couple of days. So here's your forecast for Lovaca. We're looking uh, generally partly cloudy for the afternoon tomorrow. And then uh, Cuero getting up a little to about 60 with partly cloudy skies. But then, as I mentioned, by Friday, that frontal system comes through. Saturday, cooler, dry, and very pleasant, lots of sunshine. In fact, we've got sunny skies sun, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That's your seven-day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's sports reporter Zach Brown. So despite the outside noise, the West boys still with high spirits as they prepare for the year. Here from interim head coach Jay Perez coming up in sports. The West Warriors have begun baseball practice under interim head coach Jay Perez. He has been with the school for about nine years, so he certainly knows what he's doing. And while head coach Austin Molinero is out, he's taken on new roles. But he says the kids don't even notice the difference. They've just shown up. And although he's currently got a lot on his plate, he says the athletes just always act the way they have. They are showing up every day with a purpose, and they're ready to change things here. Uh, for our program and uh, these kids I'm telling you they I'd, I'd pick them over anybody any day of the week 
they're incredible and they show up and they get after it. You know, these kids are true warriors. They show up every day and they're they're working hard. They're putting in the work right now. Let's go. Hey, let's go, Warriors. How many Warriors are three? One, two, three, three Warriors. warriors. Where's the water at? Water. Obvious First changes finish. in terms of new roles being fulfilled now that he's currently the head man in charge, but he says for the athletes, they wouldn't even notice the change. On that same campus, the Warrior basketball team's trying to shake back after falling to the East Titans. They don't play tomorrow, but they do get Miller on Tuesday. The Warriors trying to get in the win column, having lost six in a row. This is a West team that graduated some great athletes last year, looking to build on something as we enter the final stretch of the regular season. Similar story over on the girls' side of things. They hope to get a win over Miller on Tuesday as well. The girls working very hard in practice. The energy level was very high. The girls still trying to get in the win column in district play. They lost a close one last time they met Miller, losing by just four points, hoping they can churn out a victory. More in girls basketball. We've got a few teams ranked in the area once again in Class 2A. You've got the Shiner Ladies at number 10. They just got done beating Bloomington in a pretty good matchup over at the Bloom. In Class 3A, you've got the Hallettsville girls at number 20. Hallettsville and Edna. Tied for first place in that district. Those two split the season series this year. Edna left off that list, by the way. And in Class 4A, you, the likely soon-to-be district champion, Quarrel Lady Gobblers, number 17. They have a two-game lead on Lavernia with three games to go. And that is who they will play on January 30th. Texas offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick is an AP assistant coach of the year finalist and also apparently had an interview in the home of Atlanta Falcons owner Arthur Blakes. But Atlanta chose to go in a different direction, reportedly going with Raheem Morris as their new head coach. Morris was the defensive coordinator of the L.A. Rams. Another possible landing spot for uh, Bobby Slowick, excuse me, was the Carolina Panthers. There was always a C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young talk on whether or not the Panthers made the right choice, so naturally it seemed as if Slowick was a good option as the Panthers try and build around Young. Instead, they will go a different direction as well. David Canales, who was the offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay, and had a great season with Baker Mayfield, who no one seemed to want this past offseason. And Donnie Carina, I mean, it seems like it's going to be a match made in heaven if Slowick gets a second year with C.J. Stroud. I mean, it's always good to have that continuity, especially as they're trying to build something great in Houston. You well, know, that's all you, yeah. You know, Zach, <laughs> I, I, uh, I think Karina will agree with me on this. The Panthers made the right selection in picking uh, the quarterback they did. But, of course, we are Texas yeah, fans. Yeah, if you're a Texas uh, fan, yeah, absolutely yeah. the right decision. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, thank you, guys. We're going to be back in a moment. An Ohio police officer saved the life of a little girl by performing CPR.
Filers tonight, an Ohio officer called a hero after saving the life of an unresponsive three-year-old girl. Police responded to a 911 call where they could only hear a woman screaming in the background. Officer Soren Osika discovered the child had fallen and hit her head. She was unresponsive and not breathing. Without hesitation, Officer Osika started CPR and was able to get her breathing. He carried her to the ambulance. The little girl is now home from the hospital and doing fine. Great job there, officer. Great job. Great job. We have a developing situation tonight in Wharton County, Colorado River. National Weather Service says it will crest at almost 43 feet uh, tomorrow night. What's the uh, stage yes, and the uh, flood stage is 39. Oh, wow. So that was all that heavy rain north that's flowing down. So Colorado River at Wharton, uh, that's another one of our things that we've got to watch. But the good news, there's no additional rainfall. Uh, the heavy stuff is all gone. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a little fog, maybe some cloud cover, a mist or so, and then at night that frontal system comes through and really blows everything away and makes it nice and dry, sunny and cooler as we get to the weekend. It's going to be a good weekend. In fact, we got about five days of dry weather. Thank you, Mac, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.